Hey, what up, everybody? Tuna here. In today's video, I'm gonna tell you guys a story about how I crafted Pain Bane, the synthesized thicket bow. In the process I went through to make both the implicits as well as the explicits, as it was kind of a difficult craft, and overall it just took a little bit of time, something that I was planning from the start of the league. So, I bought this base for 160 divines on week one, and you think, oh, 160 divines is pretty cheap for especially a three implicit synthesized ticket bow. The ticket bow is good because it has a low attribute requirement, meaning that, you know, if you're a blade vortex character or something like that, you are going to be needing to get uh, enough dexterity to use your blade vortex. However, you know, that is 159 and most bows go up to 202, I believe. Whereas, um, you know, the Thicket Bow is 179, so that's kind of cool. Uh, you know, this character gets to 179 perfectly, and that's just by getting a little bit of Attribute Catalyst on my Headhunter. And as you can see, it's not even a max roll, so it's quite easy to actually get that requirement if you're wearing a Headhunter. And also, of course, Mage Blood does have uh, Dexterity on it too, so it won't be that big. Of but yeah, let's talk a little bit about how you craft Implicits on kinds of items. Because crafting Implicits basically where you're going to be spending most of your money, especially if you're crafting something like this, as opposed to potentially crafting like a physical bow, right? Like a physical attack bow. Those can get very expensive when crafting both the implicits as well as the explicits. But essentially all you do is you want to use the Vivid Vulture, which is a beast that actually lets you reroll the implicits of a synthesized item. And Imprint, uh, which is from Krasic Chimerals, which is also a beast that lets you basically create a safe state of a magic item. I'll just showcase what that means and what that looks like. So imagine we have an item here, you know, imagine this was a bow. I just found this in my stash to sort of show you guys how it works. But you have an item with two implicits. And let's say that I want to keep air of effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be imprinting this item. And basically what that does is it creates um yeah a currency that looks like an eternal orb which essentially creates a safe state of your item right we have an imprint now so our item is safe in most situations when i'm crafting something really expensive like this bow i would create two imprints put one in my stash in case you know when i'm spamming crafts i don't want to be mistakenly rolling over my implicit and not have a safe state right but for this example we'll just keep one imprint and from there let's say that we want to re-roll off poison on hit to something else I would then use Vivid Vultures, as you can see here. And, uh, you know, you can buy these. These are currently three divines each and Krasic Chimerals, you know, to create imprints at three divines each. So each reroll can cost potentially six divines. But you got to remember that in most situations, you won't roll off the mod that you want to keep, at least until you get to the last stage of crafting, where it's a 33% chance to roll for the, you know, to, to roll the slot where you want to reroll. So, yeah, Vivid Vulture will reroll one of the implicits. Uh, it's going to be specifically either area of effect or poison on hit. You have no sort of agency on which one it's going to reroll. So yeah, you're going to reroll synth implicit uh, a modifier, and basically all the beasts come out and you kill them, and you look at the resulting item, and hopefully we'll have gotten rid of poison on hit. As you can see, we actually did. So in case you got rid of area of effect, what you can do is you can actually just go back the previous state and be like no i don't want that let's go back and then you just imprint again and you can see we got poison on hit back on this item so that is basically the premise of how you reroll for implicits and how you fish for implicits on an item like this all right so now that we have taken a look at base the basics on how to you know vivid vulture spam imprint and revert back to our safe state we have a base with explode and we want to roll for a second implicit and this is where the money drain starts to occur, right? So we want to look for one of a few modifiers. We want to look for critical strike multiplier. Of course, this is like really, really good. We want to look for either plus one level of supported gems. This is going to be nice because we are using empower in our bow. And so it's going to scale that up to an additional level. And it's going to mean that we're just going to be getting an additional level to our blade vortex as well as all our support gems. So that's pretty nice. Of course, explode. And we also have spells have a chance to deal double damage. I don't know why I'm not seeing it exactly, but you'll just have to believe me on that one. Here it is 16 to 18% chance to deal double damage. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like going through and scrolling all of these, you can sort of see just how many modifiers there are and just how insane it is to actually hit the modifiers that you do want. And considering the fact that every reroll is going to cost you, you know, at the time, I was paying 2.2 divines per imprint. 
and about one divine per vivid vulture. So it's going to be 3.2 divines, but now at the moment um, they cost three divines each. That's partly because of inflation this league and partly because a lot of people are crafting. But yeah, it gets super expensive. So what I did is I kept imprinting and vivid vulturing until I got one good modifier. And that modifier for me ended up being global critical strike multiplier. So I ended up getting the T1 global critical strike multiplier after a ton of rerolls, you know, seeing like all, all kinds of different tiers. And that was pretty insane. So I was very happy about that. And at this point, this is when you have to imprint again. And then you have a 33% chance of removing the modifier that you don't want in hopes of getting something that you do want. And what we did want was either plus one support or spell double damage or global double damage would have been pretty good as well for explode chest and that kind of stuff. But one thing that you need to know is that these modifiers also have hidden tiers. So there will be um, essentially like weights tied to them. And these weights will um, determine how likely it is to roll this modifier. And you can sure bet that you'll be getting like percent armor a lot more than you'll be seeing any of the other cool stuff. For example, you know, spell double damage, right? So yeah, you spend a lot of time rolling the... You spend a lot, a lot of time rolling the implicits until... We actually ended up hitting it, and this is the clip where I ended up hitting it. Like, both of them, I have to imprint back. No point in, like, spamming. Okay! Okay, dude! Okay, what the f*** is that? And honestly, like, uh, I was very, very lucky because it took me about four imprints from when I hit global critical strike multiplier to when I hit spell double damage, which is honestly and truly disgusting. But now we had the implicits done, technically the hard part. We spent a couple mirrors getting to that stage. And a couple mirrors is honestly not that much in the grand scheme of things. Considering how much uh, it generally costs to get something like that. So yeah, pretty happy about that, you know. Um, but the next stage was to craft the rest of the bow. So our base at this point looked like we had percentage chance to explode. We had 30% um, critical strike multiplier. And we had spell double damage. And that is the base that you're seeing right there. So that is a nice base. And unfortunately, the next stage is kind of horrible as well, because this is actually the stage that took me the longest. The next stage was to reroll tempering orbs. And this is a rabbit hole in, a, in and of itself. Because to complete this bow to actually have full modifiers, right? Like to where you can have these two crafted modifiers, as well as, you know, an Ashling modifier, critical strike multiplier, plus one and spell damage. You, you can't do that traditionally unless you have Hinakora's locks to annul off the multi-mod and then Ashling after, or you can tempering orb a modifier that lets you do that, right? However, this modifier is extremely rare. The tempering orb adds or replaces an enchant on a weapon, and it can also reforge the weapon sockets and do all kinds of weird stuff as well. But essentially, it is an item that is dropped in Heist and... Traditionally, in the past, it cost even up to 10 divines. But this league, actually, it's so much cheaper because it's been made a lot more available. So if you look at the price of tempering orbs, I was buying them from anywhere between... Like, honestly, I single-handedly made the market go from them being uh, 0.5 divines to them being 0.66 and even 0.7 by the end of it. But now they cost about one divine each. And you'll probably be able to find some bulk every so often but it's, it's honestly like pretty hard to buy bulk and I had to sort of go to bed and come back the next day to see the market reset and then go over and over again. So yeah, 1.3 divines for bulk of 88 and the modifier that I was rolling for is the modifier with the least weight out of all of them. That is, if you scroll all the way here again, you can see just how many modifiers there are that you can roll on, on weapons. And I was looking for, specifically, this one. Can have one additional crafted modifier. Which, the implications of having this modifier on your weapon is just insane. Because what that means is that you can actually have a bow that finishes with two crafted modifiers without having to hit a chorus lock and null off the multi-mod. And also, it lets you do some cool stuff while crafting the bow as well. Uh, which is like a really weird way to craft. I'm not used to having this modifier on my weapon. 
However, it took me like uh, <laughs> like seven to eight hundred orbs to hit this. I don't know what the averages are to hit this, but it took me like seven to eight hundred orbs to hit this. It was so boring and so insanely long to get this, and I had to wait a few days to just reset the market. It was yeah, and I'll just play the clip uh, of when I hit it. I was basically just just spamming and spamming and spamming until eventually I hit it, of course. But here's a clip. Mazal, boys. <laughs> oh. Mazal, boys. And you can see there that, like, I'm just, like, a kind of in relief, right? Rather than it being, like, a... Yo! It's, like, it's like just a relief. Mazal, boys. <laughs> Mazal, boys. <laughs> Let's go! It's done. So, yeah, we got the plus one crafted modifier, and now we can actually finally craft the bow. You know, we don't have to worry about... All right, so at this point, we are in the crafting stage for the bow. And unfortunately, you can't actually select the enchant here in PoE, um, you know, in Craft of Exile. So we're just going to have to sort of pretend like it's there and work our way uh, around that, right? So we are going to be using Woe Essences because Woe Essences, of course, they roll spell damage. And since we are playing with a spell, it's really actually hard to get like good spell modifiers on a bow. There's only really... A very few modifiers on bows that you can see that are actually valuable to spellcasters. There's no prefixes aside for plus one socketed gems, and there are no suffixes aside for global critical strike multiplier. Those are the only good affixes that you can get. So the rest will have to either get through Ashling or through crafts. And that is why we have to craft this bow in a very specific manner. So you will basically be rolling your essence. And to just make things a bit shorter, I'm just going to remove modifiers and, you know, keep some things in there, actually, because, yeah, imagine we get um, suffixes and we get multi, we go global critical strike multiplier and we want T1. So, yeah, you roll your woe essence until you have T1 global critical strike multiplier. And you can see that this is a caster modifier and the rest are not, right? So you can craft, cannot roll caster modifiers and what this actually does is it also prevents you from an annulling caster modifiers so this one divine craft basically essentially um guarantees that you can't remove the spell damage by annulling so you will annul it and then you will be guaranteed to hit everything but the caster modifier however you can still hit the multi right so if you annul it and you hit the multi off then you have to go back to uh essence spamming with bow essences and repeat the process but essentially um you can also get a result where you annul off the crafted mod which kind of sucks but this is the point where you want to be and ideally uh, you know yeah you have to probably do this a few more times as there might be stages of, along in the craft where like this bricks or something like that but yeah you get to this point and you're pretty happy because uh now you can proceed to the next stage all right, so at this point, since we had plus one crafted, you know, as the implicit, that means that we, we could skip the step of crafting, um, you know, can't have multiple crafted modifiers, which would be this. But, you know, what we, what you would do is instead of crafting this, you would save a couple of divines because you could just craft anything as a suffix. And then you can roll, uh, cannot roll attack modifiers and we exalt because this guarantees that we get plus one to socketed gems. And, you know, it's a 100% chance to roll that, as you can see here, 100%. Actually, you can't see it there. Let me move my camera real quick. Yeah, you can see that it's a 100% chance. That's all there is to say, really. It's a 100% chance to slam. And then you can actually go to the next stage. So at the next stage, and hopefully one of the final stages of crafting this bow, you would have to go for prefixes cannot be changed craft. Prefixes cannot be changed. And now you would have to Ashling. However, this does not save your critical strike multiplier. And it also doesn't guarantee that you will hit the modifier that we want to have which is critical strike multiplier while there is a rare or unique nearby which you can see here on the bow uh, it rolls up to 60 percent it's really really good um either this or double damage right because we could actually craft critical strike multiplier while rare or unique is nearby but actually the role of this is much higher uh veiled than it is for double damage double damage rolls up to 12 percent so it's a 20 percent increase but the critical strike multiplier has like such a more bigger range and overall is better to have that instead of double damage. Also, before you Ashling, you have to craft a prefix. It's really important to, you, uh, to have a prefix as well. 
Uh, so in our situation, you know, because we have the plus one crafted modifier, we would just do prefixes cannot be changed in a prefix. But for the purpose of the video, I have to do kind of, a, you know, I'll have to craft this one as well. But we have to have a crafted prefix because um, otherwise Ashling can actually hit the prefix. But since you have prefixes cannot be changed, uh, now with the crafted prefix, it can't hit that. So yeah, you would, uh, at this point, you would Ashling um, and you would guarantee not to hit the prefix. So you got a suffix now. Now that you have a suffix, now is the time to block. Whenever you want to block something, you want to refer back to PoEDP and you will scroll down here to the failed modifiers. So failed suffixes, you can see that um, there are weights here in red. So the red weights is basically the likelihood of this modifier rolling. However, don't get it twisted. There are some of these that actually do not roll um, with Ashling. It, not all of them roll with Ashling. But for the purpose of this, we'll just kind of like skip through just like looking for the highest weight modifier. And you can see that it is increased damage per endurance frenzy or power charge. And all of these guys are inside the family all damage, as you can see here. And that, that means that if you block one of them, none of them can roll. And they have a weight of 3000. And it's a total of 3000 out of 1450. So that means that if we block damage per uh, endurance frenzy or power charge, it's going to increase the likelihood of us getting the modifier that we do want, which is critical strike multiplier. Damage per, and we're going to do damage per frenzy. Cool. We replace that and we pray. And we unfortunately did not get it. However, there is a way to kind of try to save this. And the way that you would try to save this is at this point, you would unveil something that is an, an attack modifier. You would craft um, caster, you know, can roll caster modifiers, and you would just pray that you would null off the mod. In this case, we did, and it was—it's a pretty small chance to do that. If you if you null off the plus one, it's not the big of a deal because you can just slam it back. But if you null off the multi again, it's just over. It's completely over. But for the purpose of the video, you know, we'll just go back to unveiling um, as we are here. So we'll just spam unveil until we get critical strike multiplier while a rare or unique enemy is nearby. And I believe this is actually like a one in four chance to unveil it. And it took me about three attempts and I had to actually recraft the bow from start. Now the bow is actually done, right? It's done. And at this point, since we have the plus one craft, we can craft two mods on here, which would be double double damage, chance to deal double damage, and that would be 10%. Of course, we'd have to divine this, the last modifier. I am blanking. And the last modifier is gonna be plus two support gems, which is a prefix, right? Uh, at this point, you can also craft, like prefix can be changed, suffix can be changed, and you can pay a chaos spam for uh, a name, right? So if you were to do that, like prefix can be changed, suffix can be changed, you pay a chaos spam for a name, and we got Pain Bane, which is kind of a, a funny meme name, you know? So we kept that. then. You basically also have to do like prefaces can't be changed. Like this is sort of the tedious stuff that I didn't want to really explain, but I think it'd be interesting to some people. So imagine we do prefix can't be changed and we spam until we have, you know, 3860, which is perfect. And then you go suffixes, uh, suffixes can't be changed, which is a prefix. And we craft that instead, suffix can't be changed. And then you uh, divine it until that's perfect. And then at this st stage, you do double damage and plus two and you would just keep re-rolling that until that's 10 percent, and then you go plus two support and your bow is done and at this point the, the the game actually lets you remove the enchant but keep the two crafts and that's why you see that i have two crafted modifiers but i do not have the enchant and of course we go for the area of effect enchant in the in the crap in the, you know the harvest bench because that's just the best enchant that we can get and in general it's yeah that is basically how I crafted Pain Bane Synthesized Thicket Bow. This bow now has over 150 copies in the league. I am doing a free of charge, no service fee. You know, people are giving me like 10, 20 divines sometimes as a tip, but I, I, I don't need any tips or anything like that. All I'm going to do with the, with the currency is just spend it on crafting other cool stuff like this helmet, which might in itself be um, a video of itself, but yeah. The bow itself, I am very, very happy with it. And in general, it was really fun to craft. And the amount of people that can now have fun with this bow in this league, it's um, it's it's really like I don't know, it's it's very it's very flattering. And let's just say it's like um, I, I don't know the word in English, but you know when you feel like you achieve something and 
yeah, it's like I just feel like I've achieved something and I'm, I'm making it makes me happy. So I hope you found this video entertaining or enjoyable or I hope you have learned something on how, you know, uh, mirror tier crafting works. Of course, this is not like as insane as a 61 Isbo. Of course, that would involve a lot of Hinocor's locks and that kind of stuff. But, you know, I think the bow is pretty cool. And um, yeah, thank you very much for watching, everybody. I appreciate you and I hope you have a fantastic day. Take it easy.